thank you very much, Stephen, for the kind introduction, and thanks for having me. Good morning to all of you. During the next 30 minutes, I would like to convey three key messages to you. First message is claims, ex ex sorry, claims is extremely, extremely important for the success of every insurance company. Well, I guess all of you are claims experts, so I don't tell you anything new, but I hope at least that I can give you a few extra reasons why I think claims is so important. Secondly, claims management is changing, and it is changing dramatically. And last but not least, the importance of the human element in claims. So I hope, as I said, that I can convey those three messages to you. In actual fact, since I said it all, I could stop here and wish all of you a nice conference. Thank you. But looking at your reaction, I think I haven't been doing my job yet. So I think I need to work a little bit harder to convince you uh, that those are the messages uh, that uh, I would like to uh, take you home. Let me start with two very personal statements. Uh, firstly, claims management for me is the most single important factor that drives sustainable customer loyalty. It's basically the moment of truth why a policyholder ultimately buys an insurance policy. We can make a true difference to the lives of our customer during the claims adjudication processes, and this is the moment where we can either create customers for life or adversaries for life. And the second personal statement from my side, I personally would always keep the core of my claims organization very tightly integrated in the core business of my insurance operation. I would not, I could imagine outsourcing certain functions, certain support functions, but that heart and soul, uh, the brains behind claims, I would always try to keep very close because this is what drives your customer journey. This is what drives your customer experience. Secondly, you need to have an institutionalized feedback loop between claims, underwriting, pricing, and product development. So whatever you see in the field, uh, you need to feedback uh, to uh, your product, to your underwriting functions, and take action on it. And last but not least, I truly believe that a good claims organization can easily improve your, uh, your loss ratio by one, two, possibly even three percentage points. And this is not by underpaying claims. No, no, not at all. This is, I just mentioned it, that institutionalized feedback loop, uh, but it's also uh, aspects like um, having an institutionalized fraud management, having access to trusted um, repair shops or contractors, uh, but also um, to uh, work closely uh, with your adjusters, um, seeing what, uh, what, uh, what happens in the field and uh, take action on it. After all those opening statements, uh, let me come to the core message of my presentation. Claims management is currently going through significant change processes driven by changing customer behavior and changing technology. And I truly believe that claims management five years from now is going to be distinct, uh, distinctly different from now. And let's look a little bit deeper into it. I start by reviewing the world around us and how customer behavior is changing. This is not an, uh, an insurance uh, um, specific view, but an industry agnostic view. Customer behavior is often shaped outside our industries and uh, customers and immediately expect the same um, reaction from their insurance carriers. So I put up here six trends that we see uh, is shaping our world today. And let me go through them one by one. Sharing economy. Business models like Uber, Airbnb, but also ne uh, Netflix or Spotify are all based on the same principles. It's the notion of the underutilization of personal assets. On average, we have a utilization rate for personal assets of about 4%. And there's a clear trend to move away from owning to renting upon demand. And to give you an example, if you look at today's population, urban population in the US below 35 years, one third of them are considering not owning a car, but satisfying their public transportation, or their transportation needs by a mix between public transport, ride sharing, bicycles, uh, or renting a car. Second trend, mobility. Location data, knowing everything around you, Yelp, Google Maps, TripAdvisor. You look for a doctor, you look for a gas station, you look for a museum, you look for a restaurant or you look for a tourist attraction. It's all there at your fingertips. 
And I personally would never buy a, a tourist guide anymore. After all, they are outdated after two years when you have it all available uh, through apps. And there's a second effect to it. If you're such a location uh, provider, you learn a lot about the behavior of your customers, which you can translate into your offerings. Third trend that I see, removing friction. Get a mortgage by just providing your fingerprint. And we see comparable mo models uh, emerging in the insurance industry. Not that long ago, a homeowner startup in California promised to give you a quote by just providing your street address and basically give you that quote within 60 seconds. All you have to do is key in your street address uh, in, uh, to uh, their web portal, then a host of external data providers are searching, putting um, uh, the whole uh, background information together. You are asked as a customer then to verify uh, that background information. And if you want to proceed beyond the quote, uh, there will be up to 10 underwriting questions that will be asked and the policy will be bound within three minutes. Fourth trend, social, the power of the crowd. Peer ratings nowadays become a powerful tool not only to measure customer satisfaction, but to guide customer buying behavior. And secondly, faster penetration. To give you an example, how long did it take different technologies to reach 15 million customers, so one five? For the phone, it was 75 years. For the radio, 38 years. TV, 13 years. Facebook, four years. And Angry Bird, 35 days. Well, if you combine that faster penetration uh, with the power of the crowd uh, through peer ratings, you can imagine how, thing, how quickly things can go viral and how you can build or destroy your reputation in today's world. Fifth trend, new data exchange. Netflix, Amazon, they give you recommendations based on your profile, and Netflix goes beyond that. They produce content based on uh, the customer interest. And last but not least, right here, right now, Amazon clearly has changed the rules. Uh, what we see is that 25% of US shopping malls are predicted to be out of business within a decade. And even an Amazon same-day delivery may get disrupted by technology like 3D printing. So what does it all mean for the insurance industry? Let's zoom in a little bit closer, and what I've been drawing up here is the insurance value chain, and I believe that every part of the insurance value chain uh, will literally get affected or disrupted uh, by change nowadays. And what I've also put up here are some overarching trends that we see customer experience, process automation, digitalization, data analytics, artificial intelligence, or IoT and technology in general, that it will have an impact. And let me go from left to right, um, from product development all the way to claims. Uh, to some of the changes uh, that we see. On the product side, we see new products uh, and risks emerging, shared economy, autonomous vehicles, cyber risks, but we also see new prevention models arising. Tomorrow's successful insurer, I truly believe that, uh, will, go purely, uh, will go beyond the pure insurance solution, uh, but they will work towards preventing claims. Stephen showed it very nicely in his slides. Uh, and basically where the insurance becomes like the back-end solution, uh, only if sensor technology and uh, all kind of other preventative measures are not working, then the insurance solution kicks in and, uh, and settles the claim. On the marketing side, deeper customer insights, we spoke about that, um, and uh, then translating that into highly personalized propositions. On the distribution side, it's about ease of use, it's about digital and direct channels, but more so it's about digitally enabled agents and predictive sales analytics. On the underwriting side, we see trends like data pre-population, I described it uh, with the homeowners example. We see predictive analytics, automated underwriting, advanced risk selection, and the very same ecosystems uh, that I spoke to you before uh, when it comes to sensor technology. In particular, when we look at data analytics, I, am th uh, I think it is fair to say that was truly advanced three years ago has become table stakes nowadays. And as an insurance company, if you're not heavily engaging in those fields, you seriously are on the risk of becoming irrelevant. 
Let me move on to service and claims, and both of them are closely interrelated. So that's why I, why I will deal with them as one. On the service side, customer segmentation and micro segmentation becomes more and more important. We see chat box, uh, digital self servicing, call center analytics arising. And if I look at key trends in the insurance, uh, in the claim space, well, all I would say is just look at the brochure here uh, for our t uh, conference over the next two days. It is about efficiencies, it's about process uh, optimization, delivering greater accuracy and efficiency, auto adjudication. Then it's about customer experience, uh, personalized, transparent, and seamless uh, experience, and self-servicing, digital self-servicing. On the claims tech side, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, fraud detection, drones, we've seen it all. And then on the next frontier, so what is coming in the future, where we look at claims uh, reduction, claims prevention through sensor technology and the availability of real-time data. What does it mean today? If we look from an agent's perspective today, why are they recommending an insurance company uh, to their customer? It's about competitive pricing, not a, uh, not a surprise, but then it's about claims responsiveness and claims quality. You see two out of the top three criteria directly related to claims management. And what is driving policyholder satisfaction uh, during a claims adjudication process? It's about availability of information so that you as a policyholder know every moment in the step of your claim where you're standing and what comes next. And it is about speed, not necessarily maximum speed to get your claim settled, but adequate speed. If you look at a JD Power survey from early 2019, what we do see is that the customer satisfaction for a claim that was perceivedly settled on time was 905 out of 1,000. Whereas uh, when it took longer from a customer's perspective to get a claim settled, uh, that satisfaction index dropped to about 750. And that was the single most uh, deterrent uh, to drive customer satisfaction down. Last but not least, InsureTech. Looking back a couple of years, InsureTech and insurance innovation was mostly focusing on areas like distribution or data analytics. In nine, 2018, about 50% of the global insurance uh, insure tech spend was in the PNC industry, 46% to be precise, and we had about a third in health, about 20% in life. The usual segments prevailed, so about 40% of the spending was in distribution and another 40% in uh, pricing and products, but claims is uh, catchly, quickly, uh, quickly catching up. Uh, with about 15% of the spending, and that is the fastest accelerating uh, segment in the InsurTech uh, uh, space. That will clearly have an impact on uh, the insurance journey tomorrow. In 10 years' time, a fully digitalized claims journey is a must. What do I mean by digitalized claims journey? It starts with the digital uh, claims prevention, IoT sensors, uh, as I described it before, it's about automated claims management in the next step from your fraud management, case management, status tracking. Then comes the digital loss assessment and repair from video inspections to adjuster appointments, with repair shop appointments, and automated estimates based on AI and machine learning. And last but not least, automated settlement. All of those technologies are in use today already, but there is hardly any insurance carrier that brought them together for a connected customer journey. But be it as it may, ultimately we need to give our customers a choice how they would like to interact with us. And let me give you an example. Today, about two thirds of policyholders uh, want to check their claim status digitally. At the same time, just slightly more than 10% of policyholders would like to report their claim digitally. Reporting a claim, depending on what claim it is, can be a highly a personal matter. A matter that requires dialogue, a matter uh, where the policyholder may have a lot of questions and where they would like to have the human interaction. 
This may or may not change in the future, but I truly believe that we need to give our customers the choice how they would like to interact with you. And let me close that slide with a very controversial statement from a recent McKinsey study. The 2018 levels of claims volume can be processed in 2030 with 70 to 90% fewer personal. Hmm. How does that make you feel? Are you getting in uneasy or nervous about it? Hands up. Well, just a few of them. I, I have to admit, when I read that, it made my jaw drop. Do I believe that this is going to happen? I'm not too sure about it. Yes, we have easy standardized claims uh, that can be highly automated. Yes, we have back office processes that render significant optimization and automation potential. Yes, we can be by, can be far, by far more efficient by using technology in the adjudication process, but I personally believe, and that's my very personal uh, view, it would be a big mistake to take the human element out of the equation. And just think of that video that we saw uh, from, from State Farm before. Uh, there are many claims in our industry that require that human element, the helping hand, particularly for major losses. If your whole house burned down, you need empathy. You need that human interaction to help you get your life back together. We are gearing up uh, for claims management tomorrow and lose a lot of technologies at American Modern. Also, uh, we are using several new technologies in our claims adjudication process, ranging from video inspections where the policyholder takes pictures or videos at their own leisure, or where they have at the same time in the live stream an expert sitting on the other side of the camera. Um, I liked the um, comparison that one of our colleagues recently uh, took uh, by saying, well, we use our policyholders as our tripod, uh, and that helps us to manage effective adjuster capacity and expertise allocation. Uh, we're using fast tracking, low touch, no touch, uh, supported by AI, litigation prediction, claims estimation tools, supported by AI and machine learning. Uh, we are looking for real time feedback from our policyholders, and that's kind of my favorite, that we translate immediately in uh, process redesign. We are working with drones, also I have to admit, not particularly uh, successfully uh, satellite aerial images. And let me present you one specific example from the field of aerial imagery that we at American Modern started using intensively during the 2018 hurricane season. We're working closely with our Global Munich Re-Innovation Lab to develop that technology and we also offer uh, or consider offering it as a, as a fee-based uh, commercial service. What you see here on the right-hand side uh, is a typical aerial image that is taken. What normally happens is there are commercial providers after major catastrophes uh, that fly over uh, the cat area, take photographs, and make them available uh, to whoever is interested in. And those photographs have a very high resolution, seven and a half centimeters pixel resolution. I would describe it this way. You can literally from the airplane see what someone has on his, uh, on his plate for dinner. And uh, this resolution, those pictures are, uh, are good enough, are strong enough to help you fully adjudication, uh, adjudicating your claims. During Hurricane Michael, we were able to analyze 700,000 plus buildings within two hours after the flyover. And on the left-hand side, you see a map that is produced where you see the different dots. Uh, those are insured properties uh, where we have involvement and the different color codes show you um, the element of damage uh, that we took from those uh, photographs. In 45% of all cases, we were able to know that a property had a loss before we re uh, received the first notice of loss. And isn't that a great uh, service where we can reach out to our policyholders whilst they are still evacuated and give them the thumbs up and say, your building is fine or tell them you have a serious loss and we immediately organize temporary accommodation uh, for you. And it helps us to effectively manage adjust the capacity to settle claims faster and create a better customer experience. And let me um, illustrate that on the following example. If you have no damage, well, that's relatively easy. You don't need to do much. If you have some minor damage, as you would see in the red shaded area, on the right-hand side, you don't necessarily need to send an adjuster out because adjuster capacity after a cat is a very precious um, 
thing that you have, and you should use it uh, to the best uh, of your possibilities. This is a claim that you can easily send, uh, uh, settle remotely. If I have some minor roof damage, you can also settle it remotely by an inside adjuster. If I have some major roof damage, this is where you would like to send your adjuster out uh, to do a full-fledged uh, adjudication on the ground. And if it's a total loss, well, you can basically uh, pay out your uh, full uh, insurance policy limits. And let me close uh, with a story where I think uh, shows to me the importance of the human element. I think it will ultimately prevail in insurance. And this is the reason why I love to work in the insurance industry. And the story that I'm going to share with you taught me time and again how important empathy and taking care of people personally is. On 13th of September 2017, after Hurricane Harvey, I was riding along with Mark Hellion. You see uh, the two of us standing on top of um, one of our insured properties in the Houston area. Um, and we came to a mobile home park where we got a loss uh, that was reported to us. Uh, an elderly lady uh, with severely impaired eyesight um, suffered a loss on her mobile home. Uh, and she was telling us her story. So the water started rising, and at some stage, uh, she started realizing, oof, I need to leave here. And she had the choice of taking along either her pet animals, she had a dog and two cats, or her most important personal belongings. Ultimately, she settled for her dog, uh, left the cats and the personal belongings behind. Miraculously, the cats survived. I don't know how, but they did it. Uh, so she was walking out. At that point in time, the water is hip, uh, was at hip level. And while she was walking out of her mobile uh, home park, water started rising, rising, rising up to chest level. And she already thought, oh, no, I'm not going to make it out of here. Someone came along with a boat, rescued her. And after the water was residing, she returned back to her home. She had nowhere else to, uh, to go and live there. And when we came along a couple of days later, and you all know that as claims expert, it was all moldy. Furniture, walls, everything was moldy. Uh, so it was very quickly clear that this is a total loss, but apart from that, it's also a significant health hazard to her. What made things uh, more tricky is, uh, since she lost everything, she couldn't, for instance, prove the title and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, we were able to arrange temporary accommodation for her on the spot, give her a cash advance, and sort things out with the title and got the ball rolling uh, for a complete um, um, a reinstatement of uh, her property. Now, um, I was initially walking along with Mark, uh, settling the claim, but after a while I gravitated outside and had a chat with her, and I had my own personal experience of undercover boss, where she was telling me, well, you're a kind of a funny assistant. Um, in the beginning you do the work, but then you're just taking a break and having a nice chat with me, whilst your boss is doing all the work, so I finally didn't tell her who I was. Uh, but what was nice in the end, uh, when we were done, um, she really came over to us took our hand and said, thank you very much for putting our lives together. And then she came and gave us a hug. And I think there's no more else to say. Thank you.